Now, in our book, we detail each of those stages in, in quite a lot of detail with theory, case studies, um, exercises, etc., etc., etc. Today, we've not got time to do that. But we're going to talk you through that in terms of a, a case study. Now, if you cast your uh, minds back to 2010, Florida, deep water horizon oil disaster. This was the biggest national oil disaster ever. Tony Haywood, at that time, was the CEO of BP. You may remember some clips of him on TV, but this is him at a congressional hearing. So let's just, uh, let's just watch this at the moment. BP CEO Tony Hayward walked into a buzzsaw of criticism about his company's priorities. BP made choices that set safety aside in exchange for cost-cutting and time-saving decisions. On the 59th day of oil spewing into the Gulf, Hayward even came under fire from the audience before he was able to apologize. The explosion and fire aboard the Deepwater Horizon and the resulting oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico never should have happened. And I'm deeply sorry that it did. But while lawmakers peppered Hayward with questions about his professed laser-like commitment to safety and who made decisions about the ill-fated well, they came away empty. I'm not stonewalling. I, I simply was not involved in the decision-making process. You're not taking responsibility. You're, you're, you're kicking the can down the road and acting as if you have nothing to do with this company. And you just continue to say, I just can't answer that question. So my question for you today is today Thursday? Yes or no? It is Thursday. Okay. Analysts say beep. So, in that meeting, Tony Haywood was held accountable, but also given feedback. And you could feel the tension rise in that conversation. So, let's just think for a minute. Let's just take the example that you were coaching Tony Haywood a hugely prestigious organization to work with, the most high-profile client that you were engaged with. So you wanted to do a fantastic job and maintain that relationship. And think about it, you were coaching him just before the Deepwater Horizon activity. This was the second session. You'd been to one session. You came to the second session, and Tony Haywood said, well, I haven't done any of the actions that I agreed to do. So what do you do? Now let's go back to our two by two matrix and let's, John, let's think about potential inputs I could make as a coach and discuss what those reactions could be. So if we go to the, the low challenge, low support area to start off with, then John, if, if you were Tony Hayward and I was coaching you, I could say, okay, so what do you want to talk about today? How would you respond to that? So my immediate reaction to that is I'm relieved. Ian's let me off the hook. I haven't done any of my actions but he wants to move on and he wants to talk about today's focus. So my immediate reaction is relief. But if he keeps doing that, if that's all he ever does every time I don't do my actions or don't do what I say I, I'm going to do, to be honest, gradually I'm going to lose respect and gradually I'm going to get disinterested and gradually I'm going to disengage. So that disinterest, yeah, why are we there? Why bother? So, okay, let's move on to the next area which is the high support but still low challenge, the cosy club. Let's think about an intervention I could make there. Well, I could say, okay, it sounds like you've had a difficult few weeks. How does that make you feel? Now, I value, like everybody, I value being asked how I feel. I think that intervention is going to build rapport with me. I can feel the empathy in that question. And if I have had a terrible two weeks, it's going to help build our relationship. But again, if... If Ian, as a coach, were to continue to adopt that style of questioning with me in the second session, the third session, the fourth session, there's maybe going to come a point where, as a chief executive, I'm going to think, this feels a little bit like a counseling session. I'm focusing on my feelings a great deal. Uh, is that really what I'm paying for? It's a great rapport building, but not giving you the push that you need. So let's look at the other area, which is the, the high challenge, low support, the area of stress, and think about an intervention I can make there. Well, I could say, that's not good enough. Whose time are we wasting here? So this is really going to make me sit up. <laughs> but it's going to make me sit up a bit too quickly, a bit too bluntly. And to be honest, I probably think at that point, Ian has stepped over the line. He doesn't know me well enough to break the rapport that quickly and that bluntly. And it's, gonna, it's, it's <coughs> potentially going to make me angry. Uh, and clearly, that's not going to help our, our coaching relationship. So I've got the potential of losing that highly <laughs> prestigious client at that point. 
So let's think about the high challenge, high support intervention. And this could be, this is awkward. I don't want to let you off the hook. How committed are you to this coaching process? Now, this one really makes me think. It stops me in my tracks. Because on the one hand, Ian isn't letting me off the hook. He's been honest with me uh, about how he feels about that. And he's questioning my commitment. And that's probably a fair cop. And I'm probably thinking, yeah, with the people that I work with, what would I expect of the people who work for me? And am I really living up to my own standard? Uh, so I'm hooked by that uh, intervention. Uh, it's a nice balance for me between uh, support and challenge. Great, good. 